you're considering between the Rode NT-USB Mini and the Rode PodMic. Both of these are really good microphones for beginners, and both are made by Rode, an Australian company. I've used the NT-USB Mini here for four years, almost since this product was released to the market, and I've made hundreds of pieces of content with it. Almost everything on this channel, until recently, has been made using this microphone. The pod mic, on the other hand, I've only had this for about two weeks now, but I love it. It's replaced the NT-USB Mini for me, and in this video, I'm gonna compare these microphones on price, features, the form factor, and give you some thoughts on which one is my favorite and why it's the pod mic. If you're looking for an in-depth comparison on sound quality in different environments, this isn't that video. The first thing to think about when you're choosing between these two microphones is your budget. When I bought the NT-USB Mini in 2020, it was 99 US dollars from Amazon. But I just now checked it and the price has been dropped to 84 US dollars, also on Amazon. Well, the pod mic here is going for just over twice that at 200 US dollars. Both of these are USB mics and they include a USB cable in the box. So the price that you see for these is pretty much the complete picture. Unlike with more professional quality mics, you do not need to buy an audio interface or a preamp or a pop filter or any other equipment other than perhaps a mic arm, which I'll talk about in a moment. All you need to do with these is plug them in with this installed USB cable or any other USB-C cable and you're good to go. The mic arm I mentioned, which is the only other accessory that I suggest that you might need is like this right here. This one is a very cheap one. And this one was, it was like $17 on Amazon. I've had it for about three years. It's from a company called Innovo Gear and it's pretty sturdy for, for what it is. You don't need to go super extreme and buy the $200 road arm that they, they offer. It's plenty strong to hold these very heavy microphones. So at under $100 and $200 respectively, these are excellent value microphones. Let's look at what features these microphones have, starting with what both of them have in common. Both have USB-C outputs, and as mentioned, include in the box a three meter or six foot USB-C cable from Rode. It's a pretty heavy duty solid cable, and all you need to do is plug it into the microphone and then plug it into your computer. Both have 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks, so you can monitor your recording in real time using that feature, and both have volume control knobs to set the volume level of your headphones. Both have swing arms with threading so that you can easily mount them on a mic arm or stand. Both have built-in digital signal processing, which means they have a computer chip inside of them that processes the audio signal in real time with things like noise reduction, compression, and equalization. For both of these to set those built-in digital signal processing settings, you need to download and connect them to Rode's free software on your desktop computer. The software is called Rode Connect, and it provides some of the functionality of the Rodecaster, which is a $500 audio production device. More about that in a moment. Both have pop filters. One is built in, in the case of the NT-USB Mini, and one that slides over it, but is included in the case of the pod mic. Both are very heavy, high quality devices with metal bodies, and they're just really well built. Now here's where the microphones get different. The Rode NT-USB Mini includes a little desktop stand right here that you can pop the mic onto. And it also includes some hardware like this little adapter so that you can fit different sizes of mic stands. But this mic works best, as most mics do, when it's as close as possible to your mouth. Usually this thing is only about six to eight inches from my mouth when I'm using it. So I never actually used the stand, or I tried to use it, but having it here on my desk, away from my mouth, it was just too far away and I didn't get a great result. Um, so I, I mostly use this on the mic arm that I showed you so that it could be positioned close and offset, I should say. You don't want it to be in front of your mouth but offset about six to eight inches for best results. So personally, didn't find this super useful, but it's here. 
And like the mic itself, this little base is super high quality and sturdy. And it has a little magnet here on the top where you could attach an external pop filter if you so desired. But the main thing that sets the NT-USB mini apart from the pod mic is that this is a condenser mic, meaning it's gonna pick up a lot more ambient sound than the pod mic. It's a lot more sensitive than the pod mic, which is a dynamic mic. And that could be great if you're a musician or if you have a really quiet recording environment. But for most people, most amateur podcasters creating spoken word content, I would recommend that you go with a dynamic mic. Moving on to the pod mic. As for what's unique about this one, the pod mic has an internal shock mount. That means if you bump into this thing, either as it is or on a mic arm, presumably, it's gonna absorb the harsh noise that you hear when you bump into a microphone or a mic arm for that matter. Um, and in addition to the USB output here, it also has an XLR output and it has this little plug, this little rubber plug that goes over the XM XLR port so that you can protect that port when you're not using it. XLR cables are what professional equipment uses and it has a lot of benefits over USB. A lot of audio purists will only use XLR equipment. And what that means for you and I, what I like about this is down the road, when I have the budget for it, for, you know, an audio interface and more equipment, then this mic can grow with me. I can just upgrade to that more professional equipment and plug this thing in. Lastly, inside of the Rode Connect software, which you can download from Rode's website for free, you get more options with the pod mic. You can get a lot more granular control in terms of setting the digital signal processing compared to the NT-USB mini where you only have gain, noise gate, etc. With the pod mic, you get a lot more granular and advanced settings. And that software, by the way, the Rode Connect software, I highly recommend using it. It helps you get the highest quality audio out of these mics. And in addition to the audio settings that you just saw, it allows you to do things like update the firmware for these devices and change the gain settings. I've only said good things about these microphones so far, but the biggest thing missing from both of them is the ability to mute yourself on the mic itself. So if you're in a Zoom call, for example, you'll have to mute yourself in the software instead of on the device physically. Secondly, the Rode Connect software that I keep mentioning, while I highly recommend it for the best quality sound, it's a pain to use. When you turn it on, your audio will pass through that app, which means you need to have the app open and your computer's input set to Rode Connect. I can't tell you how many times I've started a Zoom call or a screen recording and forgotten to either open that app or change my audio input. So it adds a little bit more complexity to your recording flow. And lastly, I wish these mics were a little better from a distance than they are. As I mentioned, they work best when about six to eight inches, like a, a fist or two away from your mouth. And the quality really, really drops as you move them further away than that. But that's, that's typical of most mics. Concerning the form factor of these microphones, the pod mic is a dynamic mic. So the polar pattern is a lot smaller and it's focused on the top of the mic, meaning you're supposed to speak into it, into the top of it, as opposed to the NT, which has, you're speaking to the side of it, if you try to speak into the top of it, there's plastic there, so it's not gonna work great. Um, concerning the weight and the size of them, as you can see, this mic is much bigger, it's much taller, and it's a lot heavier. This one comes in at 1.9 pounds, while the NT-USB mini is 1.2 pounds. So these are both surprisingly heavy, but this one's gonna be a little bit more portable. The pop filter, on the pod mic is external. It's this piece right here and it's removable. So you can just slide it on like so. And it's even bigger when it's got that on. Well, with the NT-USB, you use this exactly like it is and the pop filter is built into this device. So overall, the pod mic, as you can tell, is a lot bigger in all dimensions. I've used this NT-USB mini for four years. I've created a hundred something podcast episodes. I've done thousands of Zoom calls and recorded most of the content on this channel and it's been great. No one has ever complained about poor audio quality. I love this mic. It's simple, it's affordable, it's durable, and it just works.
That said, if I knew what I know now about mics, I wouldn't have bought this one. I didn't do my research on condenser mics versus dynamic mics. So for the type of content that I create, I'm better served by a dynamic mic like this one. It's more forgiving about recording in untreated environments and it's better for that type of content, the type of content I create, which is spoken word content, not music or streaming or gaming or anything else. And I'll add this, in the two weeks that I've been using the pod mic, I've been asked several times what mic I'm using on Zoom calls because people say it sounds great. I didn't get that comment nearly as much when I was using the NT-USB mini, but both of these mics are excellent values. Whichever one you go with, I'm confident that you'll be happy with your decision. Thank you.